All righty, and welcome back. It is time for the marquee matchup of the day. New York Excelsior getting ready to go up against the Seoul Dynasty. Both teams, you know, having some relative success, especially for the Seoul Dynasty in the May Melee, making it to that final, but getting reverse swept by the Shanghai Dragons. I'm sure that these guys are going to be very hungry to come back in and be dominant in their first series here in the month of June. On the side of NYXL, though, Wolf, We've had some changes to the roster. Well, we certainly have. Um, and if we just go ahead and talk about the roster, the starting six. Yeah, why not? Just go yeah, straight to let's it. Let's talk about this roster. We will have <laughs> Haksal and Nene starting for the, the squad for DPS. This is like a dream uh, come true, I think, for a lot of people for New York. Is Libero is not, <laughs> excuse me, Libero is not like a particularly specialist type player in terms of playing one or two heroes very well. He plays a lot of heroes very well. Whereas Hoxall oh, yeah. is, in a meta like this, very much going to be fantastic on Genji. He's also pretty solid on the far. Is he Libero level? Hard to say, but that's something they could swap to if they are running into some problems in the, our first map of control. So really like that Hoxall's in yeah. uh, on his first day. We'll see if he performs well with Nene, but you've got Nene who's a specialist in hitscan and Hoxall who's a specialist in projectile together. Uh, and it's it feels like a fantasy that Huxall is actually on New York Excelsior. He's joined, you know, the LW Blue yeah. side of things. You know, no one really expected him to end up here. I don't think um, until all the rumors came out and he followed like every person who's ever even thought about being involved with NYXL. And it was like pretty obvious that's where he was going. Um, <laughs> but I don't think anyone would have thought that he'd be potentially a new star face for this roster. And it's it's really fun to see how this is going to shape up. Yeah, I mean, everybody on this lineup is is absolutely, you know, star-studded. Hawksall star-studded before he even joined the Overwatch League and is now alongside these players. I, I have to agree with you that it is uh, really bizarre to see. You know, it, it doesn't quite feel that real yet. But as, as time goes on and the more times that we see it, uh, we'll get more used to it. It's like me, you know, referring to my, my wife now. I keep saying girlfriend, but I'm like, wait, no, that's not how that is anymore. So it's just repetition, you know, uh, and then things will just normalize for us. Of course, we should talk about the rest of the players on there. So Hawksall, Nene, and then, of course, we're going to be having uh, Mono, Hotba, then, of course, Jonak and Anamo. On the other side of the coin, though, Soul Dynasty looking to bounce back after their loss in the finals for the APAC May Melee. We'll see if their starting six can get it done. Yep, their starting six will feature Profit, Fitz, Gesture, and Marvel. No surprise in Double Shield meta. And yep. going to be Slime and Bedosian kind of rounding things out. So Slime is in for Soul Dynasty. You know, a huge transfer from the Vancouver Titans. A really big pickup for them. Uh, and, you know, it's hard to say whether Slime or Toby is better at the Batiste right now. But I feel like you give Slime a shot. You give him some opportunities to play the Batiste and perform with this roster. They've had a lot of time to prepare because of the break we had for the last two weeks. So yep. I'm not shocked that we see Slime in here. But it doesn't mean I, that's sure that we're going to see Toby or not going to see Toby for the rest of the series. If, if uh, yeah, I'm sure that we'll see him. Uh, <laughs> I think we'll I, see Toby. I knew where you were going with it. Don't worry. <laughs> I think that we will see Toby as well, unless Slime just can, you know, just completely puts the team on his back and, and pops off like we've never seen before, which is possible. You know, you think back to when Runaway won their first championship in, uh, you know, Contender Season 2. A lot of that had to do with Slime and his performance on that Lucio sending people into the well pit. So we'll see exactly how things transpire in the series. But, uh, you know, both lineups, very scary on paper. And now it just comes down to execution and seeing who can do it better. I thought maybe we'd see Toby starting for them, but it's good to see that they are putting their faith in Slime here at the start of the series. Uh, and, you know, him going up against the former teammate as well. So it'll be really fun to see how things turn out. Yeah, Slime versus Hawksall. Words tough to, to <laughs> even leave my mouth. It's, it's kind of crazy. Maps-wise, by the way, we're starting on Oasis, so... Bit of a classic control map here to begin the series and you know as we head into this one i think we will see a little bit of everything i'm most curious about the farah because if we start to see more and more farah it becomes even more puzzling that we didn't see lens if i really experiment with that at all uh, especially because uh, i think shui is a pretty fantastic farah player they didn't really dabble with it at all um in soul dynasty side of things like profit has played an extensive amount of far in the past, but you don't think of him as a god-tier far player uh, the same way you look at players like Fleta. 
Huxall as well. Huxall yeah. was a strong far player, you know, back in like 2018, but there's still questions about whether or not he's uh, he should be considered a, a top tier far now, especially with Libero on the lineup. You know, you do have to wonder if he'll be if he'll be playing that at all. And you have to wonder what happened behind the scenes here for Slime to get the starting spot over Toby, because as you and I know, uh, Toby asserted his dominance in the show match uh, with Team Toby taking a victory over Team that Slime. So true. that should have been him getting the starting position. Yeah. So uh, maybe he, you know, Slime made a he made a deal with Arnold or something like that, and they, they squeezed him in at least for map number one. Uh, we'll see what happens. But we do have Fitz on the Reaper, Prophet on the Tracer, Huxall on the May, and Nene on the Ash. So coming through with that hit scan speciality, and already Huxall. Getting his first blood on the map end on the NYXL takes down Gesture, and that is just going to be the rest of the cleanup coming through as Axel fills the kill feed uh, with May, which is you know, typically not what people want to see. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's May, mean, but it's Hoxall at the same you time. You and I cast so it's Hoxall in his, uh, Apex Season 2 uh, Super Week tournament, which is like the promotions tournament to see if Runaway can get back into Apex poorly in Season 1. He played a lot of Spoiler May. Spoiler alert, they that did. That was like one of the. Uh, one of the First heroes that you know you and I cast hogs on was exclusively May back then. He's got a lot of experience on it. Oh, yeah. Yep. And the person who really brought May to the forefront was Libero. Yeah. <laughs> and here we go with Hoxall starting over him for the moment. Bubble's gonna be going out on the gesture as he leaps onto the high ground with the Discord Orb comes through and he just cannot make it off that high ground quickly enough to try and escape the Orisa, hoping to pull him back into the line of fire. They take him out. Marvel keeps himself safe with that bubble, ensuring that he doesn't get frozen here. And does retreat down through the stairwell. But it's going to be NYXL maintaining control and approaching 50% as Fitz nearly gets picked off. They try to wall him nice out. Ball. Tries to retreat, makes it around the corner, and will be okay for the time but being. He got so zoned out, they're going to have to take some time to heal him up. Marvel's losing charge right now on the Zarya. A little bit of anti synergy between the tank line here when New York Excel's going the hype round. Zarya can't do too much. Gesture makes it over the main wall. They're trying to deny that dive, but even with the nano boost, they just go ahead and freeze him up on the high ground with the blizzard perfectly timed there. And they get rid of the scientist. The cleanup continues to follow through. But Ocean will pick off Hoxel here on the back end, but that's about as good as it's going to get. I'm feeling nostalgic about, we used to joke about Gesture's eco leaps. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, he was the one who was the he was the original eco leaper. But uh, you know that that was actually a smart leap because <laughs> he had so much cleave damage that he was almost it was it was almost impossible that he would get frozen before getting the primal right. But he just barely did it. Like 97, 98 percent get frozen there. He does have the primal now. This is the God, at the point. Yeah, so many alts right now, though, for the NYXL already. We have that supercharger thrown down. Now the bob going to be invested as well from Nene. That might going to be pouncing around off of Gesture, who has that primal rage. He'll slam back down to the ground. The primal rage only really leads to the bongo getting cleaned up. Now, the shielding expiring. He's a little bit too late for that sound barrier to try to keep everybody alive. Gesture and Fitz will both fall. Now the cleanup comes through as the shielding is gone. Several members on the side of NYXL falling low, but not low enough. They cannot get the kills. Just on to Animo. They're on the end. Otherwise, 100 to 0 over the Soul Dynasty for the first round of Oasis. Yeah. So, very strong statement here from the get go for NYXL. Well, let's see what happens if Soul can get the control point first. Like, if Soul got that first, it would have been tough for NYXL to get that high ground with the comp they were running, right? And then the Zarya looks like a really smart choice, and suddenly everything plays out a lot differently. And Jester's able to jump from the high ground and threaten those choke points and get that cleave damage done, get his primal raids off, prevent them from getting onto the point. But it's really similar to what we saw in our first series uh, of the evening on Busan, where you have a composition mismatch, they have the point first, you have to approach, and the Zarya looks really weak in those situations. Hard to get your energy up. Jester didn't get that primal when he jumped onto the high ground. That was a really big turning point. So we're going to see the teleports yeah. out here, and it's going to be actually Ash. But then ain't a swap two here. No McCree. Sticking through with this one. So we'll just pretty much see those uh, mirrored cops that we just saw in the first round. Hoxall already going to be forced into the ice block. The barrier's not really protecting him, but we'll go ahead and throw the wall up. She cuts off Mono, but they manage to keep him alive and find Fitz at the same time. Jonek taking him down with the headshots coming through. Bionade connects on a four, however. That's going to be the go button gesture. Does get eliminated as he gets frozen, and Mono cuts him down. But a lot of damage dealt here. Yeah, Soul Dynasty should be able to lock down this first point as they continue to look for additional stagger kills. Won't be able to find any further after Hotfa, but the point is locked down in their favor and they are on the board. Notion hitting 
that Bionade is, I mean, essentially what guaranteed them that cap. Now, we're going to see this pulled pork composition uh, coming out from NYXL. Papa has done this a lot so far this year, where you try to pull people from the halts. Nice bubble there to deny the hook. Yeah, but Prophet going to be taken down as that A has swapped over onto the McCree. Well, he finds that headshot. Fitz barely escaping with that Wraith walk. It's nearly getting flipped here. And with Jester falling, that pretty much should lead to it. The only person who would be able to extend this would be Slime, and he himself has already been eliminated. Fitz gets into the back line, manages to find Jonak. We'll find a second one as he gets rid of Hoxall now. Prophet finds Nene, certainly. Uh, suddenly, rather, they look to turn things around and get this flip very quickly back into their favor. Prophet trying to do some serious work here on that Tracer. Jester presses forward, looks to get the zaps through onto him. Ooh, take him down, tries to get the knock off the side of the map, but Hotma playing this one out perfectly, stays safe, and it's just keeps chaos. Jester. <laughs> yeah, focused on him, so Jonah can just take him down from behind. So Dynasty get the flip into their favor for at least a moment. We'll see how long it can last. Widow comes through, Pulse Bomb is out, but will just be chewed up by the Immortality Field, and YXL continue to press back forward, escorted by Jonak with that Transcendence, and as it expires, he will find Marvel, he will find Slime, and NYXL will find the flip back. I would have really liked this stall that we saw from Soul Dynasty, and the extended fight, the Primal from Gesture, if they had control of the point during that time, but it took them so long in a really scrappy fight to get it back that New York Excelsior was bound to 100% win the follow-up fight and I'm also finally glad we're seeing a little bit more McCree here. You know, you, it's so strong against the Tracer. You have an extra poke damage. Gesture is really struggling to close the gap because he's getting Discord Orb at every turn by Jonak. And his health pool is just dwindling so quickly to any shots. Pressing forward, Slime Barrier comes through and Hoppa gonna get dropped. Maybe the Death Blossom into the back, manages to find it. As that Immortality Field will be taken down and Hoxel's got nowhere to go. Seems like Soul Dynasty should be able to win out this fight. Just have to get the clean up here as Mono drops into the pit and will fall. So Flip coming back through, barely a lead here for NYXL. So still extremely winnable for the Soul Dynasty who are at 50%. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of close match that I expected to see between these two on control. This is not a compositional mismatch. It's just really good ult economy on both sides. I'm loving how quickly Anamo is putting down these Immortality Fields. He's nearly saved NYXL uh, several times. I mean, he has saved them several times. He's nearly saved them last fight as well. Hoppet getting straight up there on top of Mono helps take him out. Goshen going to be finding that killing blow, fits with the nano boost. It's up close and personal with everybody else and demands just to get the clean up here. So Soul Dynasty now in the lead. As Marvel gets his Graviton Surge yeah. online. So this is just going to become you know, harder and harder for NYSL to try to turn this one around. They do have a Transcendence well, to help survive, but if Bidoshin gets that Bionade in, it is not going to mean anything. Arguably more important than the Grab Surge it's, itself is that Marvel's been able to consistently stay above 80 energy here. He's at, you know, he was just at 90 in the last fight. He's already at 60 for the it's right before the fight even starts. So he up to maximum energy. Super early with the grab. And then Jonak is going to have to trans early off the point. Oh, he's going to solo grab him. Yeah, solo grab comes through, forces out the transcendence away from the point, but Hoxel strikes with a death blossom, manages to find both supports. But Ocean Slime going to be taken down now. Marvel gone as well. And that bite is just going to go ahead and bite them in the rear. They start at 69%, now ticking up towards 100. There's not much time left here now for Soul Dynasty. They thought they had the fight. But it is just completely shut down. Now Profit gonna be gone. Visual Stagger coming through. Oh man, New York may have just stolen this game away. Huge play from Hawksaw. There's no Diva, there's no Sigma. And Marvel was awake, couldn't mitigate most of that damage because he was looking for the solo kill on the Jonak, forcing his trance away. Now he's gonna zone out with this Deadeye. This is gonna buy you yeah, as best as they can. Yep, tries to get the shot, will not be able to take down Marvel, but somebody's gonna make their way over onto the point. They managed to get there right in the last second. Jester, however, stunned up instantly, taken down. Hotbot hooking him through, making it look easy. Now he's trying to duke it out here against Prophet's Tracer, who's forced into the recall. The hook comes through, however, the boop back does help save him for a little bit longer, but that should be it. Fitz just gonna have to wait on that Death Blossom, does not get an opportunity to use it. And NYXL will be able to take our first map of Oasis with a 2-0. Nice start for them. Soul Dynasty coming back in for that second round, making it a lot more competitive than the first, but it's just not enough for them to get across that finish line. No, it isn't. I mean, Soul Dynasty had a lot of great moments throughout uh, that first map, and they controlled things extremely well on the first round, but... I, f I felt like, despite having to deal with Hoxall's May and Hoxall having the, the like, they were always behind in ult economy. They dealt with things really well, 
Um, Jester just not getting that primal. That was a really unfortunate timing there. Uh, and then when they were playing around the Zarya, they executed it pretty well. I feel like the one mistake they really made of both of those rounds, like the one thing we can hone in on is the solo grab on Jonax seemed smart at the time. You're going to force his trance. You can hopefully cut the team in half in that moment. But everybody jumped in on it. They uh, almost felt like everyone simultaneously forgot about the Death Blossom all at the same time. And sometimes you feel safe yeah. to just run in like that because you're like, well, our D.Va will just deal with that. But not in this case, not when D.Va's <laughs> yeah, banned. Well, so. yeah, that is uh, that is missing just a little bit there. So did not have that uh, that crucial hero that could have helped them through that. But uh, yeah, I'm inclined to agree, in theory, a good play. But I think instead you try to get everybody clumped up, force a transcendence, and then have that bionate on top and then yeah, try to win the fight that way. But, you know, he saw his opportunity. He, uh, he went for it, and fortunately does not pay off for them. So Soul Dynasty will start the series off down a map. We'll see if they can equalize, however, get us tied up when we come back for map number two. So stay tuned, guys, because it's coming at you in just a few. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch, it's a mind crunch. And by Zip Chair Game, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. Alrighty, welcome back. We are just one map into this series between the NYXL and the Soul Dynasty. Things already heating up. A 2-0 victory on Oasis, but that second round extremely back and forth. I feel like that doesn't even really do it justice with how many flips there were in that one. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Soul made some, like, it's hard to, to criticize moments like that where you make the decision to commit when it's so razor thin yeah. and it's so close. But when you do zoom out and you do rewind the tape, you could say, well, maybe it wasn't the best choice there to commit in for so long when they had the point controlled because we could have just regrouped and come in as six. Jester committed primal and got discorded. We haven't really talked that much about Jonak in this series so far, but his discords on Gesture have been there constantly. Every time, you know, Gesture yeah. shows his face, he's discorded. And when Nene is playing McCree and chipping away at that health pool, if you don't have a primal and you're playing on a wide open map, there's no diva, you're going to lose your health very quickly. So I feel like Gesture has to play a little bit more conservatively with the Winston in situations like that, especially when it's Jonak not only yeah. discording you, but then also hitting those shots himself at range. <laughs> Yeah, he's hitting you in the head. You've got Nene there with the McCree. You've got Hoxel who's freezing you so you can't even, you know, leap away. 
Uh, so yeah, I th some more conservative play would definitely be uh, a good thing for Jester to exercise. So we'll see if he can put that together for us as we go into our second map, which is of course going to be Hollywood for Hybrid. And again, see if Soul Dynasty can lead the way to a tied up series. You know, coming back in after being in the grand final of the Apex May Melee and losing would not be great, especially in a you know, 0-3 capacity, so they want to turn this one around, and they're showing us something that we haven't seen in a while, and that is Bastion right now from Prophet. Yeah, Prophet Bastion, that's a pretty big throwback there. I don't know if, um... I don't know if the NYXL know about this strategy. It's our first time seeing Hollywood on this patch and on this, this hero pool, but... I think there's a lot of ways to, to counter this right now, but it's definitely not going to be May based right? So that that's going to already throw a wrench into I'm it, it, NYXL's gears once they see this. So look at the positioning of Fitz, too. He's going to dynamite. He's going to see where they are right away. Actually connects. Not bad on the dynamite. Yeah, 20%. Yeah, gets um, multiple <laughs> people here. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're mentioning you know tools to try and break down this Bastion that they now are very much aware of. This could just lead to Hoxel swapping over onto something like the Genji, get right up in his face with that deflection coming through. That's what has to happen. And out pressure him. We'll see. It seems like for now they're feeling confident in the May. The wall will come up. That allows them to get across the archway. But you can see both supports still going to be hovering around the back as everybody else advances forward. I am a little bit worried no, yeah. about, you know, what happens when the bolts start to come through. If they actually get dropped off the side, they're in big trouble here. Like, if Barista gets knocked well, off. Well, that's a good pick. And they managed to find Fitz with the dynamite. Pushing that one through. Immortality Field going to be used as Prophet receives the Discord orb, and he's just going to be taken down. Jonak just goes ahead, puts this one. He takes this into his own hands. We'll finish off Badoshin as well. And NYXL half broken through. So the Bastion likely going to be swapped off. Doesn't really get much. 30% on the charge, so will be the May swap here for the Soul Dynasty for the Streets you, phase. And, yeah. and we have to see how they're going to fare if here. If you look at the old percentage on NYXL, you can actually see who did the majority of the damage. <laughs> it was Jonak who did a ton of the damage there. His Discord Orb helped out a ton. And that pick on to Fitz just meant that there wasn't enough damage to peel, and Yurik could just step onto the point. And then there was no angle there for Prophet's Bastion. So now New York are in a fantastic position to just roll forward here. Challenging this high ground is going to be a lot easier than challenging that bunker position we saw on A. All they had to do is kill Fitz and step on the point. And you can see that Soul is just going to operate around the high ground near this archway with the Bob they have. Yep. The Bob will get dropped in behind the cart. Looking for a target. Immortality field coming through. Jonex steps away from that. It's going to force out the trance here. As Fitz does manage to take down Mono before that heal can start coming through. So potential to try and turn this one around with Hoxall falling. That's a lot of their staying power gone, so it seems like Soul Dynasty might just be able to maintain this choke yeah. now as they get the cut off here onto Animo as well and finish this him off. This is a really cool uh, hold as well because they didn't have to use ultimates really. I mean, they just, you know, took the fight straight to NYXL. They forced Jonax Trance, which was a little bit late. I have to go back and watch, but I think some of his healing was actually blocked by Marvel as well. So Jonax just doesn't really get a lot done with that Trance. And now Soul Dynasty still hold the high ground. They still hold the ultimates that they had previously. and. New York is down in France. This is a huge swing in momentum. The Solar are in a great spot here, unless Prophet dies playing well. <laughs> unless that exact thing happens, and uh, it indeed has. So that curse. is definitely not going to be great, Prophet. And I have a very long run back, but hopefully we have a very short pause, as we will see this pop up on our screen. So we'll go ahead and see uh, what exactly is the cause, and try to get things taken care of, so we can go ahead and uh, jump back into this game rather quickly. Yeah, I'm just, uh, so, you know, I g gleam any information I don't know, um, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't I can't speculate. Chat's gone now, too, so I don't know if there's anything in that, but we'll, uh, we'll let you guys know what's happening, but might be related to we'll Prophet's death, uh, you know, I don't know, but <laughs> I think he was flanking on the, like, lower left-hand side, um, and then just got mm -hmm. picked off by Nene, because his head was exposed, and... You know, that happens with Maze a lot when you try to go for that flank freeze or you try to go for that toss in Blizzard. Um, he actually didn't have it yet. He was at 82%, but if he had hit just like three right clicks after a little bit of freeze action there, he would have been able to toss the Blizzard in and then everyone could collapse down. Yeah. So um, I, I, I guess he just got picked there and that was 
we'll never know unless we get a replay of like what exactly happened of what whether it was a yeah um headshot straight headshot or if you know he's just been tracked on his movement over there but that opens up things a lot going into the rest of this fight because that's you know one of your yeah. biggest slows and peels for controlling that high ground and that archway gone and he was so close to a blizzard yeah, I, th that's going to be pretty costly for them. Now they have to try and you know hold out as, as long as they possibly can without having that in the mix. They do still have a Transcendence, and obviously NYXL aren't running an Ana, so the, there's not going to be a Bionade to shut down that healing. So they do still have opportunities to stick on the cart. It's just a matter of not allowing Nene to get more picks like that. So everybody's got to stay together and keep their heads ducked down to make sure that he can't get those shots through. Um, but if they can do that, buy enough time for Profit to rejoin into the fight, maybe once we get things going again, they'll be able to have some success. We're still waiting right now to get word as far as what the difficulties uh, that are being experienced are. So uh, for now, we just get to go back to a classic you know, Achilles and Wolf podcast. Yeah, it's just one of those things that follows us no matter what, what country we're commentating in, what tournament it is. It's just, uh, yep. you and I have, I've had these in StarCraft, you've had these in League of Legends. Like, before we were a casting duo, and we joined together, and it just became this amalgamation of pauses um, all the time. Yeah. I feel like we haven't been alone that much this season. We, you know, we've had a, a few <laughs> more pauses, so the other casting duos have experienced the, uh, the pauses that you and I have had in the past, but we're not we're not stealing all the pause glory this season, but uh, <laughs> this is one of those. Ones, we share it with everybody else. Yeah, this is one of those ones where I'm like, yeah, you know, of course, on the first match, you and I are gonna get it. So, yeah. Oh, well, and uh, it is what it is. But for now, what we're gonna be doing is going to a quick little break, guys. And hopefully, when we come back, we'll have everything taken care of and can resume the action. So stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Alrighty, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are still just figuring out everything here with the pause so we can get back into the action, but we should be significantly closer to a solution. So uh, for now, Wolf and I will just uh, sit here and entertain you in any way that we possibly can. Yeah. Um, that doesn't break terms of service. Yeah. It's, the shirt's staying on. Sorry, uh, guys. Unfortunately, yeah, we, there are some rules. Uh, it's not exactly yeah. in any way we can, but in any way we can <laughs> legally uh, and... Within reason. And, 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 <laughs> 
not going to cost us our jobs uh, within reason. Yeah. Uh, because I like. I only just started going to the gym, so it, there's this is still a work in progress. So I'm not ready to unveil it yet. Yeah, I, I've uh, returned to the gym as well. It was the first thing I did when I like I got out of quarantine jail. I went to the, the gym like the, in the morning to sign up, and I was going to the gym until it got banned, you know, in a lot in Los Angeles, and, and yeah. then I was using like resistance bands. So I thought like, okay, I did all. I I lost a little bit of gym. Uh, progress while I was in LA, uh, and then I was a two weeks quarantine, but I'll be okay. No, I was not okay. It was. It's been really hard. <laughs> like I, I have like I have like a whole chart. Like Bren helped me um, make a new workout routine, which is probably the best workout routine I've ever had. Thanks to Bren for that. Um, but uh, I was like looking at the the numbers I had written down for the weights I was doing, uh, mostly free weight stuff, mm -hmm. and like. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to drop those down a little bit. Like, I, like, grabbed the weights <laughs> I was, like, doing where I was thinking about, you know, with Brent. I'm like, Brent's like, yeah, I think you could go one higher. I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, this is before <laughs> before I went to L.A. back in February, early, or, you know, January even. And, like, now I'm like, oh, yeah. well, we're going to have to drop those all of those numbers down quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that's pretty much where I'm at. I, uh... <laughs> I was signing up for my gym. They give me they give you like two free personal training sessions every single month, and I had the first one um, on Thursdays. So I actually, like went uh, got married and then came back and went to the gym. My it usually goes the said, other way, should, but like, yeah. <laughs> well, he, well, my personal trainer said like maybe you shouldn't go to the gym. Like you're you know you're getting you're getting married that day, and I said no. Like my girlfriend will kill me if I don't go to the gym, or my wife will kill me if I don't go to the gym. Uh, so <laughs> I ended up going, and just the amount of just reps that he had me do with just varying weights one after the other picking them up just constantly right behind me trying to encourage me to keep going i i could not feel my arms uh i woke up today and just my entire tricep is just was just on fire because i slept on it so I'm like, i guess i have to sleep on my back now or else i'm just gonna be terribly sore every single morning until this heals but i'm it it's good uh, it, it you know it's one of those good pains to have because it it's, it's the sign of progress. Um, I also feel like do I want to experience it again? <laughs> no, but I'm going to. I feel like your personal trainer may have had like some. He may have actually like taken it like pretty pretty poorly that that you uh, went to the gym on on, on uh, the day you got married. <laughs> so he was probably like, well, I'm gonna punish this guy. Like I don't know about this decision. Like that could be. Um, that could be. Eugene is uh he's he's tough. So and he does he does not let you. Uh, you know, slack off there when it comes down to working out. So he's just constantly pushing you to go further and further. He's like, I don't care if you have to bend down and, you know, push your arms up that way. Just get those weights in the air any way that you possibly can. By the end of, like, I don't even know how many, uh, I want maybe like the 300th rep, it was just like, oh, God, like, please make this end. I could just, I, for some reason, I imagine, like, your gym instructor being, like, like Lieutenant Surge from Pokemon, but like he's, but he's, uh, he just says like the Korean word for for more. Like he's like, da! Like behind you, and you're like, I can't do it anymore. He's like, da! Yeah, that's that's kind of how it was. I felt like, um, I I felt like Pikachu when he was facing Onyx, and it's just got, you know, just getting slapped around and couldn't really do anything until they really powered him up. So that's that's what we're working towards here is uh, me trying to. Trying to get ready to when go. You're, when you're done, your but, arms will um, look like onyx, you know. you know, like at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, I just need to make sure that I don't skip the leg day, so it's not just all, all in the upper body. You know, it's it's properly dispersed throughout. So, uh, we'll we'll see how things turn out. It's certainly this is under construction. You know, uh, you're gonna hide it behind a little drape, put a little sign out, say "coming soon," and then uh, it'll uh, eventually be unveiled. Well, just to go back to this pause, I think we're getting in chat sure. saying R's, R's in the chat. Any R's in the chat? <laughs> and I'm seeing R's well, in the chat. Uh, I think I, we're going. I think that means looks, we're ready. R for ready. So I think we're looks going. Looks like we back might in. be uh, jumping back in. That would be nice. So we could just uh, carry on and see. Uh, you know, we're on the cusp of a fight right now, so we kind of have to see how this goes. Obviously, we were talking about it before the break. Profit is currently eliminated. I can see the countdown timer coming too, so it seems like we are going to be able to jump back in. So I'm going to go over here and take a look at my monitor, and we can see how things transpire in the follow-up here. Nene going to be picked off. So eye for an eye on that one. And Profit is going to be respawned. Ooh, the get the hold in. Big Gravitic Flux. 
And you can see the slam down comes through and Hoppa will be eliminated. And it will in fact be the Soul Dynasty. Right. Who are the ones able to clean this up despite not having profit there. I am amazed they were able to do that. Not only, I mean, like, this is probably, you know, it's it's always controversial to talk about these, these pauses because, you know, nobody knows what was going to happen. We'll never know. But that pause, obviously, let's be real, like, it changed the course of the fight. I mean, Soul Dynasty had a lot of time to figure out, like, okay, how are we going to engage on this? All you know, go ahead and halt Flux. That was probably the best combo they had. It looked to me like New York wins it 100%. They still have four crucial ultimates, and they have the advantage for this fight, but if we have a good transfer for Doshin, I mean, Soul could have really solidified the position for that last fight. Well, you hear the window coming, coming through here from Namo. Um, Jonah going to take down that Bob, and Jester will fall. Yeah, well, the Supercharger eliminated as well. Badoshi barely getting kept alive there through that volley getting thrown out by Jonak. But as the down the goes away, he as well will be eliminated. Or actually, you know, stepped away from that one there. So cleanup coming through. NYXL looking to push the cart yet again. Just have to get the finishing blow onto Marvel, which they do. So can start advancing. But Soul Dynasty, they chew up a decent amount of time with that defense. And they obviously still have another opportunity to contest yeah. this cart. The problem is there's a lot going on right now for NYXL. They've got that transcendence. They have a bob. They the have a blizzard. Blizzard is the really scary part. But Ocean would love to wait for Jonax trans to trans. Okay, trans. Hoppa's flank here is getting called out hard. This is actually really rough. Yeah, now they have a wall into the corner. They will be able to eliminate him. That was terrible. Was a little bit scary there for Profit, but he does make it into that ice block in time. And Hawksall has to retreat here onto the high ground. The bob tossed in as well doesn't get anything. Uh, so yeah, we'll just be that transport the Blizzard coming through, and Soul Dynasty kind of equalizing the slate. Yeah. They nearly have that Gravitic Flux online, so they can even force the Transcendence from Jonic by using that ult. Well, I mean, this is going to be another cleanup, it looks like, here, potentially, on um, those members who got caught in the hall. They're actually going to be pushed back now. You can see Pitch trying to get those cleanup kills. They're still isolated, uh, and this is just so much time being bought, and I don't think that New York can actually convert this into a team fight win, barring a huge mistake for Soul Dynasty. Really poor execution, though, on that Blizzard from Hawksall when they got caught there. Hoppa getting, being the, the most obvious flanker ever, and then the emergency Blizzard does not help. Now Jonax dead, that means no chance. to be... Yeah, and Jonax dead, they still use the Amp Matrix, and it's awkwardly around the corner. Now this is going to be... That Gravitic Flux coming through, Mono getting slammed down. Does have a sliver of HP as he tries to stay alive, but... Uh, it is not looking good at all for the NYXL. Squandered their alt lead that they had earlier yeah. on, and now are just struggling to try and recover from it. I mean, it. they really need to group up and have a proper Blizzard fight here. And I don't know if Soul Dynasty is going to let them have it now, because now, but previously Soul had to play back towards the uh, towards B itself and try to wait for New York's approach. But now if they take the fight away from the point and even trade evenly, New York are going to really struggle with their respawns to actually get back to the point. And if they have to trance before they touch B, that almost guarantees they don't get it. And oh no. Well, already another pickoff coming through. And I'm going to be eliminated. But Ocean. Dylan Saucy gets that headshot tag on one of the last orbs in that volley. But he'll be forced into the Transcendence, maybe a little bit earlier than they would have wanted, but still well-timed as the Blizzard was out. That's going to be the Gravitic Flux from Hotbot looking for some picks. Profit and Toby going to be eliminated, but here comes the turnaround. But Ocean managed to fight Nene! And there's just two members left, now one. And he is nowhere near the cart. That will be the hold coming through. So they get decently close to point B, but cannot finish the map of Hollywood. Soul Dynasty have a very real win condition now here to try and tie up this set. Yeah, I mean, it was an incredible defense after the pause. Like, we have to go back to that. Like, the pause was actually insane. Like, he, like, all of Soul Dynasty had basically dropped off the high ground. Prophet was dead. Speaking of pauses, we're going to have another one here. Um, yeah, and Mono it's Mono. For it seems like Jonak having some connection issues. Yeah, it's Mono P who drops the P in the chat, and Jonak leaves. So, I think that you know it does kind of at least give us some hints that it might have been New York having issues in that pause. But going back to that moment, like Prophet was dead. Only Marvel's on the high ground, but they set up a beautiful halt into Gravitic Flux, and they essentially were able to win that that fight with that alone. New York had a huge ult advantage, which they squandered when the, there was a call out on Hoppa's flank. He got in a really rough spot, and then Hoxall panic blizzard, uh, blizzarded, whatever you want to, however you want to conjugate yeah. that verb. And then <laughs> New York just never had ults uh, to stand on from that moment on, and they just kept getting picked. And it felt like they, 
didn't know how to approach the point. Um, and every time they tried to, Bedosian was there for these flanks. And at the very end, Bedosian just like walked all the way around <laughs> to the back and was just shooting yeah, on the back of the head. Yeah, just flanked and killed Nene. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I, it, it, things got sloppy for NYXL. And as soon as that happened... They didn't know how to how to clean it up. They didn't know how to recover from that, and, and were just constantly behind, throwing out ultimates in, in a very disjointed fashion. And Soul capitalized just absolutely perfectly. So while it seems like they are you know having some tech issues here at the moment, we should be back into the game in just a few to you know again see the other side of the coin and see how the Soul Dynasty are going to be able to approach with their own attack defense. So far, is just completely fantastic. Yeah, I mean you take a look at. If we go way back and find the approach here for... That's how Fitz died, actually, at the very beginning. It was yeah. actually a flank by Nene. He killed him with dynamite. And that's a really risky position to be in if you don't have anyone spotting the wraparound. And at this, after he's dead, they just touch the point. Like, they can put their main uh, tank force on the point, and Sol either has to drop off and lose the fight or stay on the high ground and lose the point. So it's a lose-lose situation from there. It looks like we're good, though, in-game. I think yeah, we're, we're starting to get some some more uh, some more readies in that chat, so it seems like we should be able to get things underway and see if Soul Dynasty will be able to complete this map or if NYXL can stave them off by having a superior defense here compared to their attack. Countdown time will be coming through, so it seems like the pause will be lifted and we can finally resume the action here on Hollywood and uh, see what happens, what's going to transpire, and who will be walking away victorious? Will it be NYXL moving up to match point, or will we have a non-sweep series here? I think it's really... I'm going to go for the ladder. I think I'm, I'm leaning towards the ladder as well. I think it's really tough to full hold on this map right now with, uh, with the meta that we have. You don't have a Brigida, so it's harder to, you know, really be impervious. And... There's so many different comps the attacker can run. Like, this is where, you know, we started to coin the phrase, or at least, you know, you and I did. Uh, and I used it a lot back in, like, 2018. But this is, like, an attacker advantaged point, um, Hollywood is. It's not like Numbani, where the attackers have to go super far. It's a very close distance they go. They can run back to the spawn and change composition when they see what their opponents are running. So I think... You know, we're really looking for if you're NYXL, if you really want to take the win here, you're looking at that archway hold afterwards. You want to obviously deplete as much time as you can here on A, but to hope for the full hold, I think, is is folly. They're going to be running this May Ash defense. So no fashion, no craziness. Soul is going to look to run this Zarya once again. Yeah, with the Reaper as well, speaking of which, Fitz takes, uh, takes a ton of damage there as they start to go on the approach. Far, you can see the team is splitting up. A couple going to be hovering around the backside near the Mega Pack. And they will start pushing forward. Zarya Bubble goes in on a gesture as he dives onto the high ground. Mono falling low, nearly gets eliminated. The Immortality Guild keeps him alive. But look at all this cleave that Jester is getting right now. Going to be building up towards 50%. Pulled back in, but says, okay, if you want me in the cafe, I'm going to go for it. Jumps in there, drops the bubble, and helps take down Jonak. Now Hawkstall gone as well. A couple trade back kills do come through from NYXL, but Hoppa just cannot think safe behind the barriers. Gesture does manage to take him down. It's a very bloody fight, and nearly that tick goes over to Soul Dynasty, so but then with that final shot gets rid of Toby before it can come through. That's actually super clutch. He's able to prevent that tick because that makes things so much harder. So Gesture is playing this almost Winston Goat style that we saw NYXL popularize, ironically, as it was last year, where you bubble the Winston, he jumps up, gives Zarya a charge, and also does a ton of cleave damage. He's got a Primal Rage. It wasn't all bad for Soul Dynasty. They didn't get a tick. They lost the fight. They lost a lot of time, but they did get that Primal Rage. Marvel, in a longer fight here, could definitely get the Graviton Surge. This is a winnable, compos or a winnable push if they can get that first pick with the Primal and then have that longer fight. They have the Nano Boost as well, so Gesture is practically immortal. And they're going to avoid this Immortality Killer. It's going to sit that one out. And I think the re-engage here is going to be quite strong. Here we go. Yeah, that's going to be the pull in. Get the hook on a Prophet, and Hoppa will take him down. Very nicely done. A crucial pick off the find. The Nano Boost used on the Fitz isn't leading to much of anything, not even getting that much percentage built up towards the Death Blossom. Jester in the back will manage to find Nene, but now he's got to try to exit, try and stay alive. He's up on that high ground and uh, will be able to get top off here for the moment. So Pushing much. around the corner, they find the Reaper, the wall comes up, he's got nowhere to go, and it's just going to be an additional stagger. Yeah, and there's so much burst in this comp, too. Achilles for NYXL between the Discord orbs, which, you know, obviously Zia has been They're still hunting recently. for Jester. 
Yeah, gesture. Look, he comes in. Look at how quickly. He is. I mean, look, he's. Oh. He actually wasn't even looking for that, I don't think. But he just dove in front of him. But like, he, gesture. Look, I mean, gesture's the real story here. Look at how much, even with the bubble, how much abuse he was taking there, despite all the support he was getting. You see it again. Well, they are trying and trying yet again. Graviton Surge does come through from Marvel up onto the high ground. The immortality field helps keep them alive, and the Blizzard comes through from Paxol to go ahead and freeze him up. Mono will get the headshots to take him down. Toby discord for the moment, falling low. Hoxel has the cleanup. Manages to find the elimination. That's and dead, things Reaper. start looking rougher and rougher. You're talking about the unlikelihood yeah, I know. of a full hold coming through. And suddenly we've had about 50 seconds remaining. Caster Curse and again, Soul Dynasty here, I feel like. But I mean, look, the, the way that New York is doing this is pretty unique. It's a little bit different. You know, they're running this Roadhog, which make, which is kind of countering what Jester is trying to accomplish with this Winston. And look, he's swapped over to Orisa, but they have no time. This is an extremely slow composition. Suddenly swapping over these DPSs, the, changing the whole composition, doesn't give you any ultimates to work with here for Soul. Yeah, and now they have to peel back as the Ant Matrix does come through. I'm out trying to gate them away from the archway here. Fitz just looking for a shot as best as he possibly can, but every time he pokes out, he is getting poked in return. Byron will try to make his way up there onto the high ground. Profit going to be eliminated. And he finds Mono, but is that going to be enough? Hook comes through. Whole Hog going to be pulled out. Hot Bob looking for a target. Not really anybody nearby, though, and somebody's going to get their way over onto the point. They will be able to force out that overtime, but Jester falls as the OT clock starts going. Leap up over top of the main wall. Toby tries to stay alive, falls low, can't make it around the corner. Fitz arrives, gets the headshot on the Hawk Sol, but gets probably driven into oblivion by Mono, who returns with the Wrecking Ball. Marvel doing the same, going to be looking to outlast the members of the NYXL and buy enough time for the rest of his squad to rejoin here on the point to try to get the take. But Ocean, however, going to be dynamited down, Profit going to be eliminated. They start ticking their way up here with a few members that they still have playing forward. Kyle Driver not going to get that connection. Marvel finds one, but Mono finds another as Gesture will be eliminated. Toby still alive. Nearly has that Ant Matrix ready to go. Tosses it out, but they get them off the point for long enough. The full hold does, in fact, come through. And NYXL is going to be able to move up 2-0 in this series. A very extended map of Hollywood, uh, you know, especially because of the pauses. But despite their best efforts, uh, the Soul Dynasty on defense, they just can't get it done on the attack. Yeah, and I mean, I, I got to say, like, a lot of that was just really nice focus fire from NYXL onto Gesture. They just really prevented him from getting much value on the Winston. Despite being bubbled, they were able to shove him off the point numerous times. They were able to burst through oftentimes his bubble and then his primal rage. Like the amount of extra damage Jonak is giving on the Zenyatta with that Discord orb cannot be huge. Uh, you know, overstated. Like it's it's actually insane how much damage a Roadhog does just from right clicking. You're not even talking about hook combos or anything <laughs> like that. He just is hitting Winston super hard, either at close range or at medium range with the right clicks. Then you've got tons of damage coming through from Jonak himself. And it all just falls to pieces uh, when you've got the freeze and the slows coming through that really make it so difficult for Winston to accomplish anything. And so have clearly come prepared with this really nice Winston, uh, Zarya, Cleave strategy, looking for Primal, looking for high energy Zarya. They prepared it really well. The execution has been pretty solid, but it feels like New York has seen this too much already. They're super prepared for this, and they're just making it hard for Seoul. They certainly are. I mean, Seoul Dynasty... At the end of the May melee, they suffered a loss in a reverse sweep. Now are on the other side where they have to try and pull one off against an NYXL who is looking very dominant, you know, scrappy at times, but still uh, holding firmly and getting those victories. So will be a very tough turnaround for Seoul. We're going to go to a break, though. When we come back, we'll have halftime, and uh, we'll break down the first two maps. So stay tuned. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Zipchair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League.
All righty, and welcome back. It's time for our game break. And we can go ahead and look back at the last two maps. Obviously a little bit disjointed there on Hollywood given the pauses coming through, but now we can go ahead, decompress, and unpack everything that has occurred thus far. Yeah, I mean, it's been... Uh... It's been a rough one for the Soul Dynasty. Like, it's been closer than yeah. a 2-0 would, would like lead, lead you to believe if you're just tuning in now. But at the same time, I feel like there have been a lot of issues on the side of the Soul Dynasty that, that we probably need to address. Yeah, I uh, I happen to agree with that one. This isn't quite one of those series where you say, oh, you know, the scoreline doesn't tell the story because uh, it was so close. It's not really been that way for them. And we'll go ahead and focus in on that as we dive into our favorite part of every broadcast. Wolf, it is crunch time, and uh, let's go ahead and unpack this. Yeah, I mean, just talking about Seoul, they're considered to be one of the strongest double shield teams in the world, especially Asia, obviously. It's Marvel, yeah. you know, who's in with Gesture. Gesture's got a great Arisa. You would think that just trying to run that Arisa Sigma for the majority of these games, which they have run actually as well in this series, and they found great success with it, would be the go-to. This Winston Zarya that they must have found success with in scrims, or at least they're finding success with it, you know, six stacking or something like that. It's not finding any success here, not really. Um... You would think that maybe they're trying to keep that a secret. They haven't been scrimming it as much and, and trying to make sure New York doesn't know about that, right? But the execution is not perfect, and New York's reaction is very, very solid. Like the Roadhog adaptation, which is, you know, one of Hoppa's best heroes historically as well, just on top of that, uh, on top of things going poorly yeah. for Seoul. Um, that's another thing going for New York. I feel like the, the weird, like, I, I don't even I don't know why I call it Zarya Goats. I don't want to call it dive. Just the Zarya Winston comps that we're seeing right now yeah. are just being shut down so hard by Zenyatta and Roadhog that I think Soul just needs to go back to the double shield that's been working. And you know, I mean it's unfortunate that Soul's success line, you know, almost feels like uh, <laughs> a graph of like a heart rate meter. Um, yeah. For for how like how much is this meta this week? Double shields like, it jumps up and then it's not double shields. It goes <laughs> down. It feels like that sometimes. And um, you know we can't criticize their double shields all that much. But when they move away from it, it they are not finding the same level of success. It's not a bad comp. It's not poorly executed. But New York has clearly practiced against this. They know exactly what to do, and they're just countering it and destroying it. So I want to see Soul just move back to double shield a little bit for the rest of this series. Yeah, I mean, the, the curveball of the Roadhog, it, it seems to have thrown them for a loop. They, you know, have been kind of unable to deal with that from Hot Bus. So he has been crushing. People are diving in front of hooks inadvertently, uh, and they're just capitalizing. And when you combine that with two star-studded DPS players in Hawksaw and Nene, with Jonak there to support them, constantly flicking around those orbs of harmony, and the Discord orbs especially, as you were talking about before the break, it is just making for an insurmountable mix here, it would seem, for the side of the Soul Dynasty. So maybe they stick to the double shield as we go through the rest of the series, but it's really hard to say how much more of this series there is going to be. Some very close moments, and again, a really strong defense for them there on Hollywood to stop the cart before B, but the attacks have just been lacking so much, and they really need to come back into this for uh, TCP and be a lot stronger if they want to extend this. Otherwise, it might just be back-to-back three zeros. Might be. I hope not. I think Soul is capable than, a, a, you know, with more capable, a lot more capable than what we're seeing right now. And um, I just, I yeah. hope they, I hope they can bounce back. I really do. Well, I think that uh, pretty much everybody wants to see that, except maybe the you know the super diehard NYXL fans. But uh, the Soul fans especially want to see them try and swing this one around, get that reverse sweep going. So we'll see if they're going to be able to do that. That is it for our great game break and crunch time, and we'll see you guys in just a few minutes for the uh, the you know the resuming of the games. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy, big crunch, big flavor.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Alrighty, and welcome back. We are now on the other side of our halftime, which of course was brought to you by Pringles Wavy. But here we go. It's time to see if the Soul Dynasty can turn this set around, because uh, it's been pretty rough for them. 2-0 lead right now for the NYXL. We're looking to just go ahead and close this one out short, simple, and to the point. Yeah, it's been um, it's one of those nights where you and I go to our half times and we do our crunch times, and we're like, it feels like we're already almost like writing the obituary of these teams that are down 0-2. <laughs> and it's rough, you know? I mean, because everybody knows that you can't just run the double shield right. And everybody knows, like, earlier, you know, it was very much one of those, okay, cool story, bro. Like, when I was like, yeah, they just got to get their heads screwed on straight, you know? Like, uh. <laughs> but sometimes Just it's play hard. the game better. Sometimes when you look at these matchups, like last matchup, it was obviously going to be, you know, any, any analyst would have predicted that to be an extremely one-sided affair. You go into this series, yeah. and you didn't expect it to be one side, but when you see how it's going, you start to wonder, well, if, if Sol's just going to keep putting gesture, keep bubbling gesture and having him, you know, throw himself onto these high grounds, like, it hasn't been working, even though, in theory, it's a strong composition, and the support has been there, and gesture is a really good Winston. It hasn't been working, and, you know, we have to say, well, I don't know if they should be doing this anymore. It does not seem to be correct. Yeah, so that's kind of where we're at. It's time to it's time to change it up a little bit rather than just continuing to you know throw yourselves at the NYXL and hope for a different result. But uh, we are ready to go ahead and jump into what could be our third and final map, and it will be Hanamura for uh, assault here. So let's see how things transpire this time around. Hanamura, if I'm not mistaken, I don't have the map stats in front of me right now. Historically, has been a pretty good map for Soul Dynasty, but. Uh, the the style they're playing does not work well here, like especially not work well here. You can definitely do it on Anubis, um, you know, where you can toss the Winston onto the bunker to position on A and you know get a lot of Zarya charge, and then Zarya goes into the point. There's a lot of ways to run that, but on uh, A of Hanamura, Ready. you really struggle to get value with the Winston diving into A because. It's, it's just not, there's no high ground you're trying to force. Everyone could be really well spread out. Like the point itself is very open, so everyone can just back off. And then Winston isn't gonna get that much cleave damage. And, it could, and the bubble can be largely ignored. And you have to jump so far away from your teammates. You know, it's, it's very different on Hanamura. And obviously they're on defense right now. We'll see what happens when they do attack, if they decide to uh, run the Winston or not. We'll have to answer that question later, but for now, is going to be the Ash May double shield. So Five, I'm liking what I'm seeing so four, far three, for Soul two, Dynasty. It was NYXL. Pop out with a headshot potential. And then we might see that Wrecking Ball Winston dive here with the Genji. I think that I will swap once he makes his attempt. He's trying to keep it hidden for now. He's looking up towards the top. Doesn't get the shot there on the Prophet, however. Get a little bit of damage onto him and Hoppa. Gonna be frozen, discorded and eliminated. So, you can see, this is, a, you know, Soul Dynasty giving NYXL a bit of a, a taste of their own medicine. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Uh, and I was just unable to find anything here. It's just too risky. And then he's committing to this Widow Super Hard, trying to threaten Prophet, knowing where he likes to stand, but it's not working. Do not manage to find that accretion. Hawk's all gonna have to dash out to safety. Slowly gets topped back up. Looking to throw those shurikens through, but uh, Dynamite to the face. So he gets taken down. Nothing really that uh, he could do against that one when the deflection isn't there. This Mana is, will be finished off. This is the Reddit comp, by the way. Like, this is the, well, I wish Genji would, I, players wouldn't just farm Blade. I wish we could see, like, some really good Genjis getting some backline kills. And that's what this does. This comp is actually designed to kill backline heroes, kill supports when the push comes through. And you're not trying to farm a Dragon Blade and then nano it. That's why Hawkslaw is so low um, ult charge right now is because he's, Trying to find picks, he's not just throwing shurikens with a mercy attached to him. He's actually trying to get Whoa. kills, and uh, it's yeah. not working. That, you know, that, Reddit would also. Would be you know, they want to split. They want to split this whole dynasty as best as possible here, so because of the multiple dive options that they do have. So far, they just haven't been able to do it 
well enough. Nano Boost is invested here onto Hot Bob, but so is a Discord Orb, and he will barely survive with a sliver of HP. And as you can see, Pitts will be able to take him down as we cut away. One tick almost picked up power for NYXO over on the point, but given how few people are left in the fight, it will just be Mono having to roll away, and the point going to be ticking back down to zero. I feel like um, this is a comp that really suits NYXL, like the players they have. Any Tracer has always been more oh. about yeah. 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 Um, Nene's Tracer has always been more about, like, uh, scrappy picks than actual team fight engages. Ooh. Well, see us speaking of scrappy picks. Yeah, Marvel not really able to survive through the pressure. The bomb's gonna be tossed out from Fitz. Can't quite see where he landed. Looks like, yeah, slept there at the front of the point. Now Fitz gonna be taken down by Mono. Nene on the hunt, looking for a target. Will manage to find the notion who's already under fire. And didn't have the opportunity to pop that Transcendence, so NYXL are able to break through, but it was looking really dire for them for a bit there. Yeah, it was a rare caster blessing for me in this case, talking about how good <laughs> the scrappy kills, and then he pops off. huxel has got a blade, Jonak's gonna have a nano suit, but, you know, Huxel is one of the most vocal Korean players you'll ever see. If you watch his stream, you'll see even when he plays solo queue, he shares an insane amount of information. I feel like this style of dive with the Wrecking Ball and how much it's not focused on the blade itself, but just on picks is extremely good for Huxel and Nene's play style. I love to see how they're executing this. Now they've got the real ult push. Minefield's gonna be tossed here onto the point. The freeze comes through on the bottom to try to pinch him off. Bion able to buy a little bit more time, but Fitz manages to get the kill in the end. Nanobu's gonna be held on to here for the moment for Jonak as the shielding expires from the sound barrier. They kite their way back around towards the front. It seems like, yeah, they just have to surrender the push. So do lose out on a major support ultimate. Bionade connects on the three, but it doesn't matter. So she just cleans up both supports, and Soul Dynasty maintain control for now. Nene is just going to try to do Nene things. Whoa. This is an extremely new look for New York, by the way. Playing this scrappy dive, you know... This is going to turn around eventually. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, say, Bill be on the Tracer anymore. It's not extremely calculated through the chaos. It's more about risk-taking, calculated risk as best as possible, but not the best ult fighting that we're seeing, you know? That sound barrier wasted in the last one a little bit too late, the minefield going down. I wanted to use that to set up for the blade, but now they had to hold the blade. This is a lot harder to execute this blade push, and then you lose time if it fails. Nano out on the Hawksaw. Immortality Field buys a little bit of time, but it's actually going to be Jonex sniping Toby out from underneath him. The blade comes back down, cuts through Marvel. Fitz tries to turn things around, though. Finds both supports with the Pulse Bomb. But now it's just him by himself, and Hawksaw cleans up house. Second tick going to be coming through as Marvel tags onto the point. Gets that pile driver through, so actually denies that second tick for the moment. Marvel trying to stay alive as Prophet's over onto the Reaper. The Jester comes back in with the Reinhardt. They might actually be able to make this one work, and it seems increasingly likely yeah, that really it will work out for them. New York are and playing... And they deny a second tick as well. They're playing around, you know, these dash resets from Hawksaw, these, these one-off kills, these individual plays, right? But that doesn't work very well on Assault if you can't get a 5k, right? If you get two or three, that's not enough. The spawns are going to come through, your comp starts to lose power after your ult expires. And they're staying with this dive, but I don't know about this. Oh, man. Marvel just kind of flicking to the side, getting lucky. Uh, shotgun Blast does manage to take down Mono again. Big ups to the Discord Orbs being tossed out here from Badoshin, who's making a lot of these kills possible. Jonak on the Moira, going to be taken down as well in the hallway as Marvel just continues to hold the door. And Hook not going to connect, but they still hold them back. The Torb is such a great counter to this. I mean, he really is. He's, he's survivable himself. Prophet's been a great Torbion all year long, and the turret's going to make it so difficult to dive and stick around with any consistency. Toxel has another Dragon Blade, but now there's a Trance ready. Now the Torbjorn set up. They've even got this. Oh, hold oh. the hook! <laughs> it's always the Tracer inadvertently yeah. as they try to get the Winston. Oh, like, boy. If you look at the yeah. ults New York has, if you covered up Solo's composition, you might think, oh, man, this is pretty unstoppable. But in, in practice, it's going to be very difficult to execute this. Already deflect is on cooldown. They've got one more push. I think they want to use the Coalescence to get onto the high ground and have Huxel do that dash into the sky, the drop down onto the supports. They need to get the Immortality Field to delete it ASAP. Pile Driver through, Minefield up onto the high ground. Stick comes in from Fitz, gets a bit of damage through, but the Sound Barrier is out, but he still manages to get rid of Huxel in the middle of the blade. Cuts him down. Turret going to be deleted as then looks for a target. He is trying to take down Fitz, now swaps over onto Marvel. Pulse Bomb comes through, gets a little bit of damage, but Marvel takes a breather. He's going to stay safe, safe and Prophet gets rid of Jonak. 
Primal Rage rolling at the moment here for Hoppa with the Nano Boost as he goes up onto the high ground, but one after the other, the members of NYXL are getting taken down, and there's just 15 seconds remaining. A pickoff here onto an armor would be catastrophic for them as they need him to loop back around to get a tag onto the point. I guess the composition lost value over by him. Soul Dynasty slowly adapted. The Yorker could have to try to touch here, but I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah, they just barely managed to get in. Uh, but makes his way through, almost cost him his life for that one. That's going to be the Molten Core coming through from Profit. Trying to keep everybody zoned off the point. You see Hoxel touching the ground there for a moment, nearly falls, and Fitz manages to scoop up the kill on the back end. Three members now gone for NYXL. Jonak falling as well, means no supports available. A Discord Orb out onto Nene. Mana rolling down, trying to get that health pack, trying to get back to the point, but he cannot do so. Whole Hog gates him off, and that will be at 66.1% on point B for NYXL. So again, another position where Soul Dynasty have a win condition, a very clearly set one for themselves. Yeah. It's just a matter of can they get there this time. I mean, New York, This is like I was saying before, it's a completely different look for New York Excelsior. They've always been a team that's very much extremely calculated, slow playing. That's why they did so well in GOATS. They're very methodical. They don't play around the chaos. They're very well practiced on small things, little things. So we're gonna look at this marble moment again. And I, I just have to say, like, putting Hawksaw on this roster definitely throws a wrench in all that. I think he adds a lot to this team. It gives them more, you know, explosive power. He gives them the ability to play dive a lot better than I think Libero does on paper. You know, Libero is the Genji player, or was rather, I should say, the Genji player for the squad before Hawksaw joined. And we know Hawksaw is the better Genji, right? Libero has better qualities as well. Like, there's strengths and weaknesses of both uh, flex projectile players. But NYXL, it's like if you draw a circle on a piece of paper and you go to cut it out, you know, just because the circle is drawn with a compass doesn't mean the circle that you cut doesn't come out with jagged edges. In New York Excelsior, on paper you're like, oh, it's Hawksaw and then it's perfect Tracer Genji. Look at the ults they have, but it's a little bit jagged around the edges. It's not perfect yet, you know? Even though the strategy like on, on paper looks perfect, the execution isn't there yet. And uh, Soul Dynasty has a real chance to bring the series back now because of how this Hanamura map started. I always love your analogies. <laughs> when, they, <laughs> when they go a little wild, and I'm not exactly sure where it's heading until you finish talking. All together coming through. This force on the ice block there from Hoxel. And he's just going to be playing up into the choke profit. Getting chunked out, nearly picked off. Barely survives, but desperately is in need of some healing. Still I like has received Sanzo. none. <laughs> I'm like watching Prophet's HP bar here. Yeah. He finally picks up a health pack, I believe. Good start. At least a couple nades come through from Toby to keep him alive. Immortality Field is going to be used here by the Soul Dynasty. Hopbot finishes that one off, and as soon as it's gone, Bidoshin does get eliminated. Enemies. Wrapped around the backside, Prophet puts up that wall to keep himself safe. This is pretty Stun comes through here on the hot but I mean, this is so disjointed right now from Soul. <laughs> Marvel going to be killed off by the accretion, and I just, I'm, I'm losing it. I don't know what's happening anymore. Well, unfortunately, Prophet here, I think, might not be able to this ball either. He does get away, but Fitz, he gets away because Fitz is not going to get away. Think, okay, they're actually collapsing in. Like, I can't oh, believe everyone's trying alive. To. Yeah, Immortality Field keeps them off. They get halted together. They finish off Anamo's Immortality Field. There's just going to be expiring naturally. Prophet throws up the wall. As they try to get around the back, goes into the ice block Trance here. Slowly topped up, but he doesn't have a blizzard ready to kill. He's still going to be alive, however. Jonak falling low has the Discord Orb here, but the, ki the kills very much come through in the way for NYXL. A single tick going to be picked up by Marvel alone on the point. So at least snatches out, out from underneath of NYXL, crazy, but otherwise, just such a wild fight. Very I, much all over the, the place. They got the Trance, they got the blizzard, so this next fight is really good for Soul. But their ability, I mean, Fitz is out there, man. Like, the only way that could have gone crazier if they just eventually leapfrogged to B and suddenly were having a team fight on B, but Soul regrouped. It took them so long to do so, and then they were just killed by a flux. But now, they have the massive ult advantage here. They still have a decent amount of time, so if they can make this push work, they've got a real argument for that time bank being strong enough for them to take B, bring the series back. This is a really crucial moment for Soul Dynasty. This ult advantage they have right now with Trance coming online and the Blizzard. Lux comes out first, Maywall going to be denying the bomb from getting into the back line and operating like a battering ramp. So we'll just be stopped up there at the front. Hoxel collapse on top of, just be taken down by Marvel, and now the notion just going to be getting rid of that bomb. One less thing to worry about as Jonak is around the backside, poking away at Marvel where possible. 
Marvel is collapsed on from both sides. He just can't stay safe. Does get cut down. Now Bedosian gonna be gone before he can use a Transcendence. And Brodus still commits the Blizzard to the fight. He gets eliminated by Mono, and suddenly everything is just catastrophic for this whole dynasty. We still have three ultimates to work with here, but yeah. the Blizzard was one of the biggest tools. There's been a lot of debate about Prophet recently, you know, about whether or not he should still hold that title of the you know, greatest of all time in Overwatch. You know, he was being discussed in that role for so long, for two years. Is this the greatest player, the individual player, the greatest flex? But his ults this year, especially the last few weeks, not perfect. That was not one of the good ones. Dragon Strike going to be rolling through. They're trying to get the catch there onto Mono, and he will be taken down by Jester as he pushes around the corner. Jester himself barely staying alive. The Immortality Field keeps him in the fight for a little bit longer. Fitz tries to get around the barrier here of Hot Button. We'll just pop in that kinetic draft to try and stay alive. But Ocean. For the pickoff, throws those orbs around the side, gets a dink onto Jonek, nearly takes him down. Now Bedosian's gonna be pushing up with that transcendence rolling to keep everybody topped up. Jonek now gonna be mashing on the back end. The wall comes up, keeps him zoned back away from the point for the moment, but Hotbo with the Gravitic Flux manages to get rid of Fitz. Now Marvel going to be gone. Three members down are the Soul Dynasty, Toby and Prophet, the only two now remaining. The ice block, it goes, it expires. Hoppa finds the kills and OT bleeds away, and that is going to be it yet again. There's a repetition of what we saw on Hollywood, a full hold coming in after Soul Dynasty, stave off NYXL on a point B, but they just cannot progress on their own attacks. They get two ticks here on point A, but that's it, and the series goes to NYXL. Yeah, I mean, there were some disjointed um, fights that Soul had to take, not because they made some mistakes, but because New York cut them in half a lot of the time. Uh, and then you saw Profit there in that, really, that cri critical, pivotal moment that I was talking about where they had that Blizzard, they had the huge ult advantages, and yeah. they were down two members when Profit threw the... He threw the Blizzard as he was dying, which then essentially meant it was a 6v3 uh, New York versus yeah. Seoul while the Blizzard went down. And Prophet's one of my favorite players of all time. You and I cast him playing Genji for sure. the first time and becoming the Apex Season 4 Finals MVP. He's been extremely talented. He It feels like almost single-handedly won London, the inaugural season Grand Finals. Even though his team was performing poorly last year, he looked to be the shining uh, star uh, and what was an otherwise dark London Spitfire last year. But this year, the Echo, we have to criticize it a lot. Now we're seeing some issues on the May. Uh, and this is not the same Prophet that we elevated as greatest of all time. And yeah. I, I mean, and he's arguably on a stronger team now with this roster on Soul Dynasty, but something is missing. I don't want to point this whole series on this one failed Blizzard by Prophet, by the way. Like, please don't misunderstand me, but... <laughs> It's these little things I think that the Soul fans will remember most about this series because it was so otherwise close. There were a lot of moments that Soul had advantages in. They had great defense. And it's these little moments you're going to remember you're going to be frustrated by if you're a Soul fan. It's like, why did Prophet Blizzard there? Like, that's going to be the part that you remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm really unfortunate, but uh, for you know the NYXL fans and everybody else who's watching this with no horse in the race, uh, plenty of good memories to come through. We got to see Hoxel here for the first time playing with the NYXL, bringing out his Genji, excelling on that from time to time, but uh, somebody who was also extremely consistent throughout and is our player of the match presented by Xfinity is Hoppa, who was just crushing it with the Roadhog pretty much the entire time. And his ability to play Roadhog, Roadhog at a really high level uh, is what dismantled the entire time strategy, the scenario that we're seeing from the Dynasty. Just shutting that down not only with hooks, but also with great burst damage. He was hitting the hooks, he was hitting the right hooks, he needed to, and he made gestures like, you know, he made gestures like, he's still playable in the side of the home, you know? And Jeff is one of the best mixed players we have, so we want to just to have that little impact because Hoffa played so well. Uh, Sigma as well had some great moments throughout the series too. Uh, yeah. Easily a player of the match pick despite Hoxall's um, pop offs on the Genji. Yeah, I mean honestly, if not Hot Bot, I would I would have gone for for Jonek on this one. Uh, just clean Zenyatta the whole way through. You know, showing us what he became famous for in the inaugural season of the Overwatch League, how he earned that MVP slot. Uh, it's still just fantastically performed by him. The Discord orbs on point, constantly picking up kills as well. So, you know, that really does assist Hotba in getting a lot of those kills that he had because the Discord orbs were often not on the same target. But, um, yeah, Hotba just consistent all the way through. NYX 
XL overall can feel good. Both squads certainly need to work on their attack. Defense looking pretty clean from both of these teams, but if they can clean up that attack uh, side of things, it would be pretty darn good for them. Yeah, I mean, Jonak's one of those players that, you know, the focus was on him heavily in inaugural in the inaugural season 2018. In 2019, will he get his MVP again? He didn't, but there was a lot of focus on him because he was the MVP. And yeah. I feel like this year we've had so many rookies join the Overwatch League, so many solid Koreans and Yada players have really stepped up to the plate. So Jonak doesn't get that same focus, and New York hasn't had the same consistency this season. So people do forget about him. They don't highlight him as much. We saw him in the kill feed. You could see the Discord orbs in your UI now. Uh, so you could see what he's doing, but I'm glad you shouted yeah. that out because he has kind of... I don't want to say he's fallen off like skill wise. He absolutely is not, but he he's no, not been no, part no. of the conversation as much I think as he should be. And uh, he had a fantastic series. His Discord orbs are what empowered Hoppa, as you said, and, and why uh, Soul Dynasty. That's a big reason why Soul Dynasty had such a big problem with the uh, Winston comps they were running. Yeah. Well, fantastically done for the NYXL, who can hold their heads high and advance into the month of June with a victory already under their belts alongside the Shanghai Dragons. But unfortunately, guys, those are the only two series that we did have for you today. So we have our two victorious teams coming up with three zeros each. And uh, of course, we don't have any more APAC matches tomorrow. So for Wolf and I, we will see you next week for some continued Overwatch League action. But of course, we do have the North American circuit going to be coming up in... I I don't even know. What is it? Eight, eight, eight nine hours? Yeah, it's a bit of a while away, but it'll be when you guys wake up, yeah. basically. You got enough You got enough time to get a get a little sleep in, you know, power nap, that kind of thing. Just a solid seven-hour power nap, perhaps. <laughs> um, but make sure you guys have your alarms set and you go ahead, wake up and watch those matches because they are sure to be as exciting and, you know, Maybe more, maybe even more exciting than the ones we just had. Probably. Here. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna promise Probably. that, but it's possible. <laughs> is all I'm saying. But uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Wolf and I will see you next week, and make sure you check out NA.